Hey guys, welcome back to Music Talk with John. This is only the fourth time I've been trying to do this video. One time I did it all the way through and the rest I keep getting stopped, so I'm waiting. I'm waiting to see what the next distraction will be. But anyway, if I can get through this thing, we'll be good. Just three different areas I want to, three different things I want to talk to you about. The first one is I have like, I was gifted three boxes of classical music. It's gotta be 300 CDs in there at least or more. Uh, Philips brand, Deutsch Gramophone, EMI, I think. There's some Sony in there. There's all kinds in there. So I've got them sorted by by the label, and that's as far as I've gotten. So i got to see what I have. If you know anything about classical music, let me know. I'm trying to figure out if I should keep any. I'm not a big classical music person, but I might keep some of it. Or just see if I can maybe sell some of it to get some albums. Who knows? We'll see. But anyway, uh, that was that. And then recently I was uh, texted by Chance over at uh, Concert Buddy. My buddy, your buddy, everybody's buddy. And he said, hey, they've got this uh, Sheryl Crow album that's uh, marked down big time. It's down to like six bucks or seven bucks or something. It's a picture disc. I don't know how well it plays. Uh, story of everything. I'm not really sure why it was put together. I know she had a documentary. Don't know if it's part of that. Looks like there's some songs, there's some duets. Um, one good thing it's on here I saw was the Redemption Day with Johnny Cash on here. So I don't know if it's part of Threads, part of different albums, or what this is, really is. I have no idea. But uh, I picked it up since it was pretty cheap and I like Cheryl Crow. So hopefully it's uh, good enough to keep. So just one of those things. You know, we do as record collectors from time to time. We buy it and we don't really know why, but we do. But I have it. I'm happy with it. Put it in a different case because I do not like those plastic cases. So I'll get something better for it. Third thing I'm going to discuss with you is my basically my recent pickups as well as recent listens because I got these, cleaned them, and uh, played them. So that's what I've been busy listening to lately. Uh, first one, well, first three, really. Picked up some Art Blakey, really good uh, early Blakey. This is, is this my earliest Blakey album? I think it's like 56. I'm looking over here at my sheet. I have a spreadsheet. Steve, all the world's a stage. If you're watching, I have my spreadsheet. Um, let's see, this is, where was it? Yeah, this is the earliest Blakey I have. And this is 57. This uh, was recorded in March of 57. Um, really good. I put it as Orgy and Rhythm Volume 1, and I don't know why. It doesn't say that on here. I don't know where I picked that up. But anyway, I'll have to look into that. This is very, so I guess it's early Blakey, and what it is is very, his, out of the albums I have, I would say the most rhythmic, based around rhythm, drums, percussion, all those things. Blakey even kind of talks, sings on one of the songs on side two, as well as um, uh, Sabu, I believe his name was. The name sounds familiar. I probably have him on something else. I'll have to check uh, Lou Donaldson, because Lou uses congas and stuff. Anyway, there's a picture of Sabu with Blakey. Really good album. Enjoyed it. Like I said, very rhythm-based. Very rhythmic. Um, then, just caught myself saying, um, gotta stop that. There's, uh, in this corner, this is later 70s Blakey. And, um, there it goes again. And music on vinyl version of uh, Art Blakey and the Jazz Messengers, live at Montreal, Montreal and uh, North Sea. Very good. All these are good. This sounds really good. All these are really good sounding albums. I didn't have a problem with any of these uh, as far as sound. So very happy to have these and add those three to my Blakey collection. If you've seen me enough, you know Blakey is my favorite jazz drummer. Then my favorite jazz sax player, sorry Coltrane, Lou Donaldson. I like Coltrane, but Lou Donaldson, I don't know. He always has this percussion feel to his music. It's different organs in there. I don't know. I just like Lou from what I've heard so far. So I picked this one up, signifying this is a, I believe this is an early Lou. I'm not going to, I'm going to stop looking at the dates and stuff, but um, it's been put through the ringer. It's had some age and wear you can see on it, but the album's clean and it plays nice. A few pops, no big deal. So nice one to have. So Lou Donaldson signifying. This one, speaking of Concert Buddy once again, this is my first VCLT that I received, not this one. But Chance was nice enough to pick me up a copy. I have it. I will keep it. It's not going anywhere. But I found this one. Um, has, stop with the ums. Has 
I believe the original shrink. I don't know if that's the original price sticker, but it has an insert in there. The vinyl is clean. There's very few pops on this. Probably another cleaning or two. It'll be good, good as gold. So Billy Joel, The Hassles, Hour of the Wolf. This was their, yeah, I think their last album. They only did two. I believe this is the second one. But anyway, this is for Billy Joel fans, basically. But very happy to have it, and it will be right in there keeping the other one company chance. So that one will not be forgotten. I just couldn't, I couldn't pass this one up. Then, picked up uh, one of the only two Bon Jovi albums I'll probably ever own, Slippery When Wet. This one was probably weaker than my other one, which is my favorite Bon Jovi album, New Jersey. I just think there's not a dead track on New Jersey. Maybe a weak song, but not filler as far as I'm concerned. But Slippery When Wet, where Slippery When Wet has pretty much a pretty strong uh, first side. Social Disease is probably the weakest on there, but starting off with Let It Rock, You Give Love a Bad Name, Living on a Prayer, Wanted Dead or Alive. I mean, those three, Love, Living, and Wanted, were huge. So that definitely put them overboard. Second side's a little weaker. Never Say Goodbye is a good ballad, rock ballad or whatever. But definitely a weaker side. But uh, it's enough of the album where I want to I want to have and I'll listen to. So this one in New Jersey. Uh, and I've it's funny because I have two New Jerseys. I'm pointing over here because I have a, st a stack of records that are going to go. Uh, they're not bad as far as uh, somebody else probably enjoying them. It's just not where I want them to be. Uh, they don't skip or anything like that, but I've got a pile. And two New Jerseys are in that pile. They just, uh, there was one thing wrong with one side, and on the other album, there's something wrong on the side, too. So it's crazy how that works out. But anyway, then Tom Petty, Mud Crutch. Been looking for this for a replacement for a long time. I had a copy, just uh, not a good copy of it, and didn't like the quality. There was issues with it, and probably bad pressing. And, uh, guy comes in the record store kingfish about three weeks ago and says hey i heard mud crutch is uh is available blah blah i'm like i don't think so that thing's been on back order and whatever forever look it up and sure enough mud crutch mud crutch 2 all these different ones are available so they got they uh, put in for a copy for me and i got mine really like it this is a really good album starts off with a uh, shady grove which is a really cool country kind of song um and it just keeps this country vibe through it but not too country i wouldn't say but uh, just good Tom Petty music and writing. So, Mud Crutch, if you haven't heard that one, check it out. Then, I picked up, finally, The Smiths. Uh, I've been talking about it in some of the videos over at Kingfish. Guy at the Rick over there said, check it out. I did and liked it, and now I have it. Uh, and this is the crazy thing about it. Bought the album, got it home, took it out, and it was in a uh, really slippery sleeve. Slippery sleeve? And it slipped right out of the sleeve, went down, hit my toe, and hit the floor. And I'm like, great, before I even get to listen to the thing. So I picked it up off the ground. I cleaned it really well, felt it. Didn't feel like it was a scratch. So I was assuming it just turned into a scuff. But it went right across my toenail. So this will be the toenail album. Whenever I open it, it'll be me thinking, me thinking solemnly like this person. This damn album ran across my toenail. But it plays fine. Not a problem. I played it right over that spot. and Not an issue. So, got lucky. So, that album just has a story behind it now. Picked this up at a garage sale. Couldn't resist. I mean, for a dollar. This, it's somewhere in the 80s pressing. Haven't uh, really checked out the Dead Wax too much. But played it. Cleaned it. Played it. And uh, the guy that I... The place I went to and got this from had a really good collection. But they were just really bad shape so there are only a few that i pulled out of there this was one of them plays really well i'll have to listen to my reissue back there and see which one i'm going to keep i prefer to keep the original if i can so we'll see but what a great album i listened to it again and it's been you know probably about a year since i played it and man good all right this one for my tom waits collection one from the heart and it's a soundtrack I did with uh, crystal gale and other musicians and a uh, good like uh, horns and I think there's some orchestration on there I believe so just lounge acty kind of sound and stuff her voice is good their harmonies sound good together not my favorite Tom Waits album but I, I put it on you know here and there but just definitely wanted in my Tom Waits collection and you don't see it very often so in very good shape clean so I went ahead and picked it up then let's get into Neil Young right got this one time fades away 50 it has a bonus track on it very good live album you don't have it definitely check it out 
I would do that. And then I picked up what I'd call a, a basic, like, early 70s Willie Whalen seven, um, country album. And it has Willie and Whalen on there. I think there's two songs with Whalen, one with Willie. Really good country themed album. Perfect picture for what the what the album is. And um, I I really enjoyed it. I think it was his efforts to keep uh, pissing off Geffen over there. Those boys putting out a country album. But I like it. Uh, I like it better than this one. This is not a bad album, but I do like that one better. Uh, Landing on Water, one of his 80s albums. Starting to fill in the gap on my... Neil Young 80s, I'm closing in on like 50 Neil Young albums at this point. And no matter how many I have, it just seems like there's always going to be another one I don't have. But uh, I don't even know what songs were off of this. I remember liking Hippie Dream off of this. Um, I mean, it was a good album. I probably need to give it a second listen to let it grow on me. The only one that I, Neil Young album I've had a problem with is Hawks and Doves, I believe. I just have a hard time with that album. This one, I think I just need a couple listens and I'll be right in that groove. Then, this one's cool. This is not Parachute. I keep want to say it's Parachute, but it's DOL, I think. And they are a like a European company. I say Parachute because Parachute does something similar to DOL, which they get uh, like radio broadcasts, which this is. And they, uh, they're they public domain, so they release them. This is really good sounding. I have no problem with the way this is presented. It's pressed well. I think it's on a clear vinyl or something. Oh, it's on like a green vinyl, which I don't get, but... Um, very good. This is Neil Young, 1994. It was for his benefit concert. I forget the name of it. It's for like, uh, people with disabilities, uh, learning disabilities and things like that. Hopefully you can hear me. My mic is flipping around here. And, uh, he, he did this. This is mostly the songs off of Sleeps with Angels. And I had a hard time with that album. And I was hoping that this live version would, would really change those songs for me. And it did. I mean... Just great, and it, it's cool because he did it. I know this is around the time of Kurt Cobain's death, because Sleeps with Angels, uh, basically, from what I remember, was a tribute to Kurt Cobain after his death. And in supposedly Kurt Cobain's note, if I'm remembering this correctly, he put, I don't want to use certain words because YouTube will get you, but he used words from Hey, Hey, My, My. It's like better to... Um, to burn out than to fade away or something like that. And I think that struck Neil, you know, took it to heart. So it's interesting he put Sleeps with Angels and then Hey, Hey, My, My. There you go. Right, uh, Sleeps with Angels and Hey, Hey, My, My right after that. So, and then the rest of these are, I believe, all off of that Sleeps with Angels. It's not the whole album, but a majority of this material is. And he does a Piece of Crap, which I believe is on there too, with Pearl Jam Live. And that's a fun live song. But recorded well. Kind of neat, too. You can hear little uh, uh, chords going in and out of amplifiers, crackle crunches, and stuff like that. Really cool. But, um, yeah, it's an enjoyable album. Then I picked this up. Neil Young put out his Archives 3. So I went ahead and picked that up. This is just a comp. I don't think they're putting out the full Archives 3 collection on vinyl. I believe it's just going to be on CD. But I went ahead and picked up this comp. And it's good. And it's got an interesting song here. Again, Hey, Hey, My, My into the black but he does it with devo and it's interesting it's a really devo devo ish so anyway and then the last one i picked up of neil young was this one really cool way down in the rust bucket this is like that 90s early 90s recordings like uh russ never sleeps era of live recordings just four lps of killer and i got it for a really good price couldn't believe the price so i just grabbed it and just enjoyed every bit of this so if you see this, definitely check it out. And then the last two, one I'm almost finished listening to and one I have to listen to. This was The Highwaymen live at the Nassau Coliseum. It was like 1990 or something like that, somewhere in there. I didn't realize these guys had like three albums. I don't know what the third one, what the third one was, but there's Highwaymen and Highwaymen 2. I think one came out in 85, one in 90, and there was some other release in uh, 95. So this was, mm, yeah. 90, something like that, 90, 92, I don't know, somewhere in the early 90s, and it's a great mix, great, uh, well well recorded, not an issue with the recording, it's a live performance, and they do a good job of it, I'm, I'm suspect on Highwaymen, Highwayman, as each guy comes up to sing his part, you know how each one of the guys has their own uh, verse, 
the way the crowd kind of applauds and comes in and out sounds a little artificial to me, but that's the only complaint I kind of have about it. Maybe it could have been, you know, could have been true, but the way it's recorded, it sounds, sounds a little uh, post-production. But great, it's a great comp of all four of these guys and their careers. Um, you have Highwaymen, Mamas Don't Let Your Babies Grow Up To Be Cowboys, Good Hearted Woman, Ring of Fire, Folsom Prison. Sunday Morning Coming Down, didn't know. I'm assuming that's a Chris Christopherson song. Really like it. I think Johnny sings on that also. Then Help Me Make It Through the Night, more upbeat version of that song. Always on my mind, being, me and Bobby McGee, always on my mind, love this version much more than the original recording. Just great. Uh, me and B Bobby McGee, Silver Stallion, Are You Sure Hank Done It This Way, Big River, Lukenbach, Texas, and they end on On the Road Again. Perfect. So, good good uh, album, but I haven't, I say perfect, I haven't heard it yet, but I'm up to Silver Stallion, so I have to finish the last part of that. Then, the last thing I was going to show you here, where did it go? You hiding on me? Where'd it go? It's right in front of me. Well, that's where they go. Third World, I just, it was a dollar, and I said it's reggae, and I said I should listen to it, so I picked it up for a dollar. I'm going to see how it goes. Give it a listen. It's like 1982 or something this came out. Not sure of anybody in this, but I'll give it a listen and see what happens. So anyway, thank you for watching. Appreciate your time. And uh, if you have any uh, comments about those classical CDs, that Sheryl Crow, any of these albums, let me know. Put it in the comments below. We'll talk about it. Hit that like button. And until next time, hope you guys enjoy your music and you take care. All right. Bye.